We're continuing our series on Shakespeare and weapons in early modern England by taking a look at the halberd this week. And we're asking the question, did Shakespeare have a halberd? A halberd, which is also spelled halbard, halbert, or actually for the Swiss, it's called a Swiss Volga, is a two-handed pole weapon that came to prominent use in the 14th and 15th centuries. It was a military weapon, it was a popular military weapon, and it was very effective because on one side it had an axe, which is good for things that axe are good for, slicing through things and totally decimating your opponent. But then on the back side of the axe, it had a curved hook that was made out of metal, the same material that the axe was made out of, that was great for grabbing an opponent and pulling him off of his horse. As you might imagine, this was a pretty fearsome weapon to wield, especially if you have an entire army of people, each of them armed with this very long halberd. The halberd was about six feet long and was used in battle, both hand-to-hand -hand combat and often as a guard weapon. You'll see this uh, portrayed in films and movies where you'll see the guard standing up holding a halberd. It was so formidable, they actually think that the halberd is what dispatched Richard III at the Battle of the Bosworth, which is one reason I think William Shakespeare includes three of his six references to the halberd I was able to find from his plays in Richard III. Now, all three references in Richard III are stage directions where Shakespeare indicates the character is carrying or that he is, in the case of Buckingham in one reference, that actually the Buckingham reference, I believe, is Henry VIII. Yes. In Henry VIII, Buckingham enters with people who are carrying halberds. In Richard III, there are three more references to the halberd, but in each case, it, it's just stage directions that says this person enter with a halberd. It doesn't necessarily say whether they're carrying it or whether they're accompanied by someone who's carrying it. It's not very clear. But I think that they play a role in the play Richard III because historians and legend generally thinks that's how Richard III died. So obviously it would need to be there if Shakespeare was going to depict him dying historically accurately. For Shakespeare's life, the halberd was moving its way out of functional use. The halberd would go on to be replaced by the firearm, which, as we discussed last week, was getting its start during Shakespeare's lifetime. They were coming up with the flintlock and the matchlock and the wheel lock. You can find links to that episode on the screen or below in the show notes where we talk about what those are. But as those got better and were being used more, the halberd fell into what is called ceremonial use. It's a popular emblem of the military. It visually represented force and I am in charge here and I am guarding this, you know, and that's why it's used in a lot of movies where you see people holding it because just visually it looks very fierce and it has this reputation of representing the army or the military. So it is actually still used in ceremonies today. You'll see in this image of people carrying what is actually called a partisan, which is a relative of the halberd. Um, it has a little bit different shaped head on it, but that's usually what the halberd was used for. So for William Shakespeare's lifetime, it probably was still being used a little bit as a military weapon, but it was on its way out. It was rapidly being replaced by things like the rifle that would come into being in the 17th century. That's it for this week. I'm Casty Cash, and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. We'd love to have you join us each week here on YouTube. We're here every Saturday morning. And if you would like to support the work we do here, you can actually donate to the podcast. It's kind of like Patreon, except it's hosted on my website, so there's no extra fees associated with it. You get an annual gift from me. I'm an artist and a filmmaker, so I send you gifts from my collection for free every year to say thank you for supporting us here. And you also get access to our members only Facebook community. And there's bonuses available in there that I don't give anywhere else, like bonus episodes, content, and interviews that you only get if you are supporting us. So if you like the history here and you'd like to help us be able to share more history or make better films, please consider becoming a patron. And you can find out more about that at castycash.com slash support. That's it. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.